Hey guys, Terry from Smooth Workshop here and welcome to part two, uh, which is the actual build of this little uh, mini electronics kit, the Velman MK147 uh, dual white LED stroboscope. So um, I made a little error in the, the, the um, what's in the kit. I said it was a 22K resistor, it wasn't, it was a 22 ohm. But anyway, we'll go through that. So got my soldering bolt heating up so you will need a soldering iron um, I'll just pull back you can see my soldering bolt there um, you will also need some solder uh, flux cord solder I'm using uh, a lead tin mix because it's a lot better for uh, DIY projects and everything like that nobody that I know of that's worked in electronics for years has ever died from lead poisoning from solder so don't worry about it lead in its purest form um, so yeah, so mine's is uh, 0.7 millimeters, so that's fine. Um, and I've got my wee tip cleaner there, so my bolt's just heating up. So um, right, <clears throat> I usually start um, by doing the lowest profile components first, which will be the resistors. So R1 to R4, which we've already looked at, which is brown, black, red, or 1,000 ohms, or 1K resistors. Um, so that's them there. The gold band just denotes the um, the tolerance of 5%. Okay, so you could see that there. It's brown, black, and red, and that's how you tell what the, the, the value of the resistors are. So there are four of these. Now, I've got a little tool, a little lead bending tool now, Luckily, Velman, unlike my last kit that I did, have actually got the proper spacing on the board for um, the, the quarter watt resistors. Um, the last board had spacing for um, the uh, eighth of a watt one, so I can use my lead bending tool. You don't have to, you can bend them by hand. So um, basically, I've got a little black dot in here, which is the same size as the quarter watt resistors and I just bend the legs down it like that and that's I'm ready to go out into the board with the correct spacing so it's just a wee <coughs> excuse me it's handy if you're doing a lot of them you just use a lead bending tool and bend all your resistors you can of course do them all by hand that's fine um, it's just me and my gadgets so I'll link that up. I think you can get them from Amazon as well. So if you can get them from Amazon, I'll put a wee link up uh, in the description and the show more tab underneath along with uh, where you can get this kit on Amazon as well. Um, if you fancy a little rainy day project, as I say, a um, bit of fun, a bit of practice for your soldering. And it's also quite handy because I will be modifying this circuit for quite a few uh, model making related builds. So I'm just... Just been warming my bolt up there, so I'm just gonna turn my bolt. Now, whilst I'm doing this, you see all the smoke coming off. I'm gonna put my fan on. You will hear it in the background. That just draws the smoke away. You don't really want to be uh, breathing in the flux fumes. Right, so let's get the first one. We're looking for R1 to R4. So where's R1? There we go. I'll just put that lead bending tool, it makes it nice and easy. So that's R1 in. Uh, R2, and I'm going to... They're, they're not polarity sensitive at all, I'm just a bit OCD, so I've got all the um, the bands running the same way. <laughs> uh, right, R3. Right, we'll put the gold, the gold bit to the top to stop the electrons falling out, I think. So R3, in you go, R3 and R4 which is down there and I'll put that the same way as the other ones just cause I can. Right, so easiest way I find with these is let's just lay them all flat, it will comply. I'll just use a bit of weight off my tweezers on the end. Now, it's got quite nice big pads on these, um, so they'll be easy to solder. Um, it's bare copper though, so they're not, um, they're not tinned or anything, like some of the other ones. 
So I shall get my soldering bolt out and get the first of the resistors done. Now, as always, if you've watched any of my videos, I um, tend to do one pin first. So I'm placing the bolt, hopefully you can see that. A little bit wobbly on the pad and on the lead. I think it needs a bit more temperature. I'll just dial it up a little bit. Set about 280 degrees at the moment. I've got a thermo temperature controlled <coughs> soldering station. So again, onto the pad, onto the pin. Let it heat up. And then hopefully... Oh, come on Terry. Once it gets up to temperature, I'm using a different uh, tip for what I normally use. I normally use a chisel tip, but I'm trying this little uh, pin tip out. So I'll just put a tiny little bit on there to help with the conductivity because they're quite big pads. And I'll just do one leg on each. Like so, and I've got this one to do. So I find this very therapeutic. I mean, yeah, it's, it's basic stuff. It's a bit of fun. It's a cheap kit. Gives you something to do on a rainy day. So I've got, I should have a pin soldered on each resistor, unlike what I usually do. And all I'm doing is checking to see that they're all sitting nice and flush and level on the board. This one's sitting up a little bit. So I'm just going to go underneath and gently reflow that and push it in and get my finger off quick before I burn myself. Now let's see the other ones, how are they sitting there, alright. And that one looks okay as well. So that's fine and I can go ahead and solder the rest of the pins. So yeah, as I say, I've Got a re I worked in electronics for a while in a factory um, making all these things but I hadn't really thought about what all the components did and stuff like that and now uh, because I want to light up my model kits and everything I'm now trying to understand how all the circuits in that work I've got a good general basic knowledge of uh, what all the components do um, I'll eventually progress onto more complicated circuits, but little kits like this, um, as I say, it's a stroboscopic effects on aircraft and um, sci-fi model kits, uh, the styrene model kits that I like building, um, have strobes on them. So using this particular circuit, um, obviously this board's a bit big, um, but I could modify and make my own um, circuit using the same components as this, just in a different layout, um, to enable me to have strobes um, on an aircraft or a, a sci-fi model, something like that. And it's just nice, a nice, a nice little kit to do, and lets you test the test the circuit. So I'm just cutting the little legs off. I'm just going to let them ping. Um, make sure when you're cutting these, though, if you're letting them ping off, you can cover them with the end of your finger, that you've got eye protection on, because they can ping quite away. Um, that one's went for miles. So do make sure you've got adequate eye protection, health and safety and all that. Right, okay, so that's those done. The next one I want is R5, which is 100K, which is brown, black, and yellow, which is this one. You can't really make out the yellow, but it's brown, black, and yellow. So that's R5, so let's bend this one over. So yeah, I find this all very therapeutic. I love soldering, making things. Um, 
and especially if you're going to be putting them into a model kit or something like that, they'll have a purpose as well. Um, right, so R5 is sitting there, so let's get the gold to the top. There we go. So that's our 100k resistor. So as I say, these wee kits don't take long to go together. Just let you see how I'm doing my soldering. Um, a lot of, some of my friends are experimenting with putting lightning in their kits with various degrees of success. Um, some people buy the pre-wired kits, which can be quite expensive. Um, but if you can figure out how to do all this yourself, you're going to save yourself plenty of pennies. Um, of course, Arduino is an option as well. I do have one. I will eventually at some point fiddle about with it. But um, Arduino is pretty much... It's more about the coding side of things. Uh, you still have to be able to do the basic electronics for all the components and stuff. Um, even though you might use Arduino. So I'll just take these two off. Right, so the next resistor I want is R6, which is 2K2. And 2K2 is do, 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 red, red, red. So 2,200 ohms or 2.2K. As I say, um, for the model making friends um, that aren't so clued up with the electronics I've got a series of electricity videos uh, they're more geared towards um, putting lighting into your kit and at the moment I'm just sort of explaining components and what they are and what they do and things like that um, it's been a while since I've done the last one my next one's going to be on resistors so this is R6 let's put it the same way up as the other ones um, just to give people a bit of a basic understanding and show them how to do certain circuits to do most things in their model kits like people who do model cars and things like that they want headlights and stuff like that which is pretty straightforward it's just sort of resistors and LEDs um, but uh, you, if you're wanting indicator circuits and stuff like that then you're on to um, using transistors and capacitors and I haven't went through that section of um, components yet on my electricity series but I will do but as I say uh, as far as uh, soldering practice and things like that these little kits are wonderful right, that's down nicely and um, something to do in a rainy afternoon um, practicing soldering skills all that sort of stuff I just find them fun. There we go. So that's that one on. It really does go together quite quickly. So let's take that one off. Do be careful when you're cutting um, not to go down too far and actually cut in. You are only just want to take the leg off um, flush underneath. I need to actually take that one back a little bit more. But you're, you're just taking the excess leg off. Okay, so there should be one resistor left to do. Um, which should be 22 ohms. Which should be red, red and black. Which this one is. Again, I'll just put it in my little lead forming tool. Bend the legs over. As I say, you can do them by hand. But this, ah, just me and my gadgets. So this should be R7. Which it is. This goes up in the top right. So as I mentioned earlier, and yet I've again I've got to cover this um, for some of the guys when I do the basic electricity series. I've actually got a circuit made up already. Um, it's a basic oscillating circuit. I've also got the kit that you can get for a basic oscillating circuit. This has just got an extra transistor in it uh, and capacitor. But I know uh, a friend of mine did get one. He, um, 
the oscillating circuit's quite good for if you're wanting to do like say you've got a police car or a fire engine or something like that and you want to do the two tone lights flashing back and forward it's absolutely ideal for that but I know one of my friends got a kit and um, he couldn't get it working uh, it was a bot kit um, the same as that little kit I just showed you but I also have one on my breadboard so it's not a difficult um, it's one of the more basic circuits but I will cover that as well in my electricity series uh, for my model making buddies right so we have all the resistors fitted which is lovely now what's going to be the next biggest thing sticking off the board I think it will be the switches so both switches are exactly the same um, it doesn't look to be an awful lot of metal content in them so hopefully they will um, go with the same iron temperature so let's just see if these all stay in I'll do one pin on each I'll do uh, what will I do will I do the middle pin do the middle pins now Let's see, oh, my solder's getting near the end of the roll and it's been a little bit of a devil. So I'll just press down on there and get the heat in. And then once it's hot enough, flow the solder into the pad. And then take it away and I'll do the other one while I'm here. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Just heating the pin and the pad at the same time. And then flowing my solder in. And the way. I'll let them cool down a bit so that the switch doesn't overheat. But I just want to make sure that the switches are uh, nicely on the board. Ah, the seam. Ah, that one needs to go down. A oh, sorry, you can't see what I'm talking about. I'll just scroll out a wee bit. This one seems off the board a little bit. So I'm just going to reheat this pin and push the... There we go. That's that flush on the board now. I'll just do the same with this one. I'll go into the middle pin. Yeah, that seems to be okay. So I'll let it cool down a bit so that the I don't melt anything inside the switch because there's a little plastic little plastic runner in there and we don't want to melt that although I do believe that it's a heat resistant um, plastic a thermal setting plastic rather than a thermal plastic so let's get that on here so I've got a few other wee kits as well um, I'll put up um, just a bit of fun as I say something, something to do on a rainy day um, I'm just going to reflow that one actually a bit is that sitting ok yep yeah a bit of, bit of rainy day fun uh, something that will take you a wee half an hour or an hour you'll, you'll see how long it takes me because I'm obviously I'm yapping away and trying to film it at the same time um, but it's not taking me long to batter through this and at the end you'll have a, a wee gadget that does something The other good thing about using leaded solder, it's got a slightly lower melting temperature. Um, it's more malleable. Uh, it doesn't tend, you don't tend to get um, stress cracks and things with it. So there you go, there's the switches in. And the thing to check is that you have no solder bridges between them all. So that's the switches done. So I'll just, excuse me a second, I need to, I'm still getting over this man flu. I've had it since Christmas. So the next tallest thing on the board, I would suspect, would be this uh, variable uh, resistor. 
or a potentiometer or rheostat, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to take this little pin out at the moment because it's the next highest thing. Now there's three pins on this um, and it's 100k. So between these two pins it's 100k and then there's a sweep. And depending on where the sweep is, it's somewhere between 0 and 100k. Again, I'll explain that um, to those that are still learning the electronics. And it shows you on the board which way it goes. Um, that are still learning the electronics. Um, how that all works when I cover my resistor series. Right, so let's get a little bit of solder out. So we're now going to... As I say, these wee things will keep you going for an hour or so on a rainy day. Um, and you might think, oh, six quid. Well, six quid for an hour's entertainment. That's all right. It's all right in my book. I'll just put a little bit of solder on to help with it. Come on, get in there. There we go. Let that cool down. Make sure that's nice and... Oh, focus. Nice and flush. Yeah, that looks okay. Get the other one done. Again, don't try not to breathe in. Um, even if you've got a wee... I've got a proper extraction fan with a carbon-activated charcoal filter in it, but um, above my bench. If you don't have that and you have a little you know, a wee PC fan or something like that, and just have it blown across the bench so that it's, you're not breathing this stuff in. Um, it's not very good for you. Right, is that in? Nope, that's not totally soldered all the way around. Let's get a little bit more solder in there with the flux. Okay, so that's the variable resistor or pot soldered in. So the next tallest things I think will be the transistors. Right, so they come on a bandolier um, and as I said before these are uh, BC547s which are standard what they call PNP um, transistors. Again I've still got to cover that on my electricity but the way I always remember it is the middle pin If it's a PNP, it's negatively switched because the N is negative. Or NPN, sorry, these are NPNs. Um, the P is in the middle, so it's positively switched. Now, as you can see, the shape of these is just a straight line. And it has the transistor markings there, so... If I remember right, it's collector base emitter. The base is the middle pin. And there's the one you want to go in there, but it's staggered. So we have to do a little bit of bending. So what I typically do, let's see, are these going to need bent as well? Right, the space, the spacing's right for them. But I need to stagger this one out a bit, so I will just bend that out slightly. Hopefully that's on camera. And then down, like so. So I've got a little step. In it. Okay, so that when I put it into the board, it should, without too much difficulty, I've bent it the wrong way. Terry, you're a fool. Because the flat side, right, lines up with that. I've bent it back to front. Not to worry. I shall squeeze it flat again. I should have checked that. I feel a bit of a div. There you go. So we'll go the other way. And then bend it. That way. So that the flat part. Sits with the flat part. Uh, have I got it bent enough? Rookie mistake. I wasn't, I was too busy yapping and not paying attention. So then the transistor goes into the board. As I can see so. I'm just give it a wee wiggle down. 
Now, when we solder this, we don't want to keep the heat on them too long because um, you can damage the transistors. So just remember you're getting the base the right way around. So there's a the flat part going that way. So I want to bend the pin towards the back, like so. Oh, on camera would help, and like so. So that this one will go in. Get in your double, you will. There we go. So you notice they are orientated slightly different directions, these two. That's to do with how they route the, the circuit on the board. And the last one, with the flat that way, the leg wants bent backwards. So let's do the same again. So we bend that way. And then a wee bend that way, like so. So that, that can sit in there. So there's three transistors. So let's get them all in the board. All kind of sat down the same amount. And then we'll, we'll have a go at soldering them, shall we, without them falling out. That's why, oh dear, that one came out. That's why I uh, tend to do them in height order, so you can press them in. I'm just making a pig's ear of this one. Right, they're all in and they're all down. So, like before, I'll just zoom in so you can see the cluster of three transistors there. Let's try and get more central on camera for you. Okay, so I'm just going to do... Turn my little bolt there. Just going to do the outer pin on each. Just to tack them in. Same on this one. I'll let them cool down for a wee minute. And then we'll check and see how level they are. Oh, that doesn't look too... Oh, sorry. Helps if I do it on camera. That looks okay. They're kind of... That one needs to go in a little, a little bit. Yeah, they're all sitting okay. They're, they're good enough. They're good enough. Right, let's get the other other pins done. Let's clean the tip of my bolt again. A wee bit of shoulder on. Pad and pin. Oh, I've got the shakies. That's that one. Let's do this one. that one let's do this one and then I'll move over to this one and this one I'm just switching between the transistors so that I'm not doing them one after the other so that they don't get too hot and one last one here. So that's just been recorded in real time. So we're about half an hour into it and we've got most of it done. So let's just oh, come back out and snip the legs off of these. So yeah, bit of fun. Um... As I say, I'm at the basic level with the electronics, but I've got a good idea of what I'm doing. Um, next step's making my own circuit boards. 
but you need a bit of paraphernalia for that, so I'm uh, saving up for that at the moment. So we don't have too many more components to put in. We have a couple of uh, capacitors, a couple of electrolytics. Now uh, it tells you on the schematic that C1 is 100 microfarad. So what one's this? This is 100, so this is C1. Now the longest leg is a positive and you've got the shortest leg denoted with a, a minus sign here and a little white stripe as well is a negative. On some boards it will be marked like this where you've got a plus next to the positive leg and other ones it will be shaded where the negative leg is. So we'll make sure, now it did double check that C1 is 100 and we shall pop that through the board like so. I'll just bend the legs slightly to help hold that in. And I'll do one leg. Um, just to hold it in place. It will comply. And then check that my capacitor's not all tombstoned, oh, which it is a little bit. So I shall just reapply that. Make sure, it's quite hard to make sure I'm on camera here, but there we go, a little bit of wiggle. Again, with the capacitors, you don't want to hold the heat on too long, or the electrolyte inside um, can dry up on them and uh, shorten their life. So quick as you can with a soldering with a decent heat and on. Saves heat taking absolutely ages. And just make sure you've no solder short in between the two of them. Okay, and you've got a nice joint, so that's that one. So that's 100 microfarad. We're nearly there were all the parts actually. Well, it helps if you actually cut the leg, Terry. I don't know where that one went. So that means that the other one that we have left should be the 10 microfarad. I'm just double checking. It is 10 microfarad and it goes over by, I'll just that a wee bit over by C2 and you can see the positive mark on it so the longest leg is a positive let's get that in there get that in let's get that wee bend some solder on it get it kind of central on the camera so you can see what I'm doing Dab one leg first. Let's see how that's sitting on the board. That's actually sitting nice and square. That'll do me. Get the other pin soldered. So that's us just about done actually. As I say, it's a fun little rainy day kind of kit. Um, but if you build models, you might find that it has a function that you can use in your model making. Um, I can think of many, um, many applications. I'll just come back out again, sorry. I need to set the camera, man. This camera works terrible. Oh, that one hit the ceiling. Right, so what have we got left? Um, we only have two more components as such um, to install, and that's the LEDs. Now these are the only ones you have to watch how long you hold the heat on for. Um, I'm going to actually turn my soldering station down a bit. If you hold the heat on them for too long, um, there's a tiny, tiny, a tiny, tiny little gold link wire that goes um, from the anode, which is a small. Can you see the shape of this? There's like an anvil on the right. That's your earth one. Now, ideally, when you're soldering, you want to solder the earth one first because it's got more mass. And then you let that cool down a bit before soldering the anvil. Only because that gives you more of a heat sink on that side. 
Um, and if you overheat them, the little gold link wire that goes across the LED chip on the top, uh, it melts and the LED doesn't work. So be careful, uh, not too much heat on these. Um, now, as well as having the long leg denoting the positive or the anode and the shorter leg being the cathode, some LEDs, and I think this one has, because Velman have picked it because that's how their board is, has a little chamfer, it's hard to see on this one, has a little chamfer at the cathode side, a little flat piece. And that's how it lines up on their board. They're, de they're denoting, rather than having a plus and a minus, where the flat mark is, is where your uh, cathode is, or your negative. So you want the long one going in there, and the short one going in the cathode. So let's just... Oh, it's... A little bit tight actually for whole size, but that's nice. So that's that one wobbling about in there. And the same with this one. So that's two two wobbly LEDs. That's going to be our strobes. So um, they're not going to stay in quite as easy as I'd hoped. So I'm going to bend the legs slightly. So bend that one that way and that one that way, that one that way and that one that way to try and hold them in a bit. And then I'm going to do my usual. Well, getting near the end of the roll here. Right. So let's start with doing one leg first. Now, anode. Oh. I'm missing it completely. That's not going to help, Terry. Okay, don't hold the heat on for too long, says he, holding the heat on for too long. So if this doesn't work, it's because I've fried the LEDs. See how they're sitting on the board though. Right, I want them flush with the board, so I shall just heat that up again, push it in, and heat this one up again, push it in flush, so the LEDs are flush on the board. Lovely jubbly. And just so I've got access, better access, I'm just going to snip these in now. Because the legs are quite close together. LED ones are really good, they ping for miles. Right, and let's just get these other two soldered up. Almost there, there's only two more solder connections. What are we at? 38 minutes. So as I say, rainy day project. Um, a wee hour of your time just sitting making something yeah, I'll try and catch this pad better probably from this side it's quite hard because it's rocking about on the um, on the bench you can use helping hands but uh, I can't find mine at the moment Okay, so that's that. Scroll back out. Right, we have only one more connection to make. So let's just snip these off. And that's for the battery compartment for your plus and your minus. Now, I'm just going to check that these are tinned and... Um, I might actually just retin them with some nice fresh lead solder because I use lead solder and these might just be um, lead free and I don't like lead free so just a little bit of tinning on there they do appear to be pre-tinned but uh, that was me just knocking the excess off right so we have a plus and a minus now are they hooking this up from underneath, like what? Yeah, they're doing it that way, so. The 
plus is going down from the top. And there it is there. Let's bend that over so it doesn't go anywhere. And the minus. Oops, sorry, try and keep it on camera. Minus in there. Let's bend that one that way. Or am I going to have to do them one at a time because they're coming out? Mm -hmm. Right, I'll tack them. I can always push them in. Now, you will find sometimes when you're soldering these that the um, plastic shrinks back. Don't worry about it. It happens. So, a little bit on the tip. These are quite small and fiddly, these ones. Get the solder in. Come on, stop wiggling, stop wiggling. It's my biggest problem, my hands. I've got a wee bit of shake in my hands. My left hand's got nerve damage on it. And it can have a mind of its own sometimes. So let's see. That looks okay. Does that need pushed in a wee bit? Yeah, it'll be alright. Yeah, the red one needs pushed in just a little bit. So I shall obviously watch him because the heat travels quite quickly. Heat it up. Give it a wee push in. Soldering bolt away. Let it set. Okay, let's just snip off any excess on these. Right, guys. Apart for two screws. Just switch my soldering bolt off and my fan off. There are two screws which go into the board to hold the uh, battery compartment onto the back because I believe it just goes like. Let's see if we can get this sitting properly like that. Right, so I've got two screws, two little self-tapping screws. So one, is that lined up? Hope so. No, Terry, you've not got it lined up, pal. There you go, right. right as I say, my left hand's playing silly devils with me at the moment because I've got a bit of nerve damage in there. And when you're gripping for a while, it uh, it takes a little mind of its own. So that's one screw. Just get it started. And then there's another one diagonally opposite it. In there. So it's just a really dinky little board, isn't it? So, oh, good. I forgot it had a bit of magnetism on it. I don't want to over tighten these. It's just to hold the battery pack on the back. Right, so moment of truth there. Eh? Will it work? So this is slow flash, fast flash. On and off. There's our little speed controller. So we can go like that. Right, now, battery. Where have I put the battery? A warning for anyone who is sensitive to flashing lights. Um, if you've got epilepsy or anything like that, you may want to look away now because um, we may get some strobing because that's what it's all about. So I'm going to flick the switch. Okay, so that's roughly about one hertz at the moment. I can play with the... Um, Rear start, and we're up to a couple of hertz. It's actually quite a good strobe. But then we can go into the fast speed. Now we should be able to get on to about 60 hertz. Now you shouldn't be able to detect 60 hertz. You can see a slight flicker on it um, because our mains frequency is 50 and all our light bulbs are at 50. So it's really just my camera that's picking up that 
Um, to my naked eye, I can't see any strobing whatsoever, but my camera's picking it up at 60 hertz. But to my eye, those are not flashing. Once I come down below 50, we can see for about 40 hertz upwards. Um, so you can see there that we could use this strobing um, on something like an aircraft. I'm trying not to look directly at it. You know, if strobe lights on an aircraft or whatever. So it works. Um, it really is bright. <laughs> so that is the little Velman. Uh, it doesn't come with a battery. Velman MK147 dual uh, light LED strobe. I'm quite impressed with that circuit. And I may use something similar. Um, if I'm going to be putting uh, strobes into a spacecraft or an uh, aircraft strobes or something like that. But it's quite a basic little circuit. Um, obviously, if you're if you're doing a circuit, you won't necessarily need the switches, um, so the board can get a bit smaller, or this variable resistor. Because once once you find out what speed you want them flashing at, you can replace a variable resistor with just a standard resistor, and you know just a simple on-off switch somewhere. Um, so you can do away with three large components and cut the board down even smaller. Uh, and make your own, but uh, yeah, quite like that. It's a, a nifty little, nifty little thing. So yeah, um, I like it. It's cool. And the good thing is, is because it gives you the schematic, I can make my own one up and tune it to whatever rate I want to go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's three quarters now. It's quite long, but it's it's. It kind of shows you how long it takes to make one of these little kits. Um, a rainy day, a wee thing to do for an hour. Let you practice your soldering. You might find um, that that circuit's useful for something else. You could always hide this part, take the battery part off it, hide this part somewhere within a stand or within, and take these LEDs out and take the wires for it so that you can you can actually put little strobes in. So it's it's hackable. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's Terry from Smooth Workshop. If you like what I'm putting up, uh, do feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see uh, the new videos coming up. Remember to click the little bell icon um, on the right-hand side. Also, uh, I have a Patreon page. I'll just put the link up uh, below. Don't have to, but feel free to um, support me on Patreon. Uh, tier start for a dollar a month. It just helps support the channel by wee kits like this. So as I say, uh, this is 6 48 on Amazon Prime. Uh, with free delivery if you've got Prime. Um, so I'll put the link um, down below in the comment section. Uh, click the show more and it will give you the direct link to it. I'll also see if I can get you a direct link to my lead bending tool as well. Can't promise it will be in pink. But uh, yeah, so thanks as always for watching. Um, that's the end of the, this little build. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy what you're doing, enjoy your hobby, and see you later. Bye.